Hello. In this video, we're going to go through how to graph a sine curve, and the same process applies to a cosine curve. Now, you've probably learned how to apply transformations, um, and they work perfectly fine here, but it, there are actually um, some other techniques we can use to really quickly sketch a trigonometric function um, and give us a feel of what it looks like, because we're not really interested in an exact detailed drawing. We're, we're more interested in, in the general characteristics of the curve. So let's just start and talk about what, what are the five steps that I apply here. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll write down what we know about this. So when we look at our, our, our specific function over here, y equals 4 sine x minus 40 degrees plus 1, I'm going to pull out of the fact that it has an amplitude of 4. You see that here, amplitude of 4. And we have a, a vertical shift of 1. And this plus 1 actually tells us where the sinusoidal axis is. Now, sometimes people will call the sinusoidal axis the midline. Now, one little point here to note is that we have a, a horizontal shift of 40 degrees. And be sure you write the degrees symbol. Often people will leave that out um, and just assume that we're working in degrees. But if you don't have a degrees symbol, actually you're indicating working in, in, in radians, which is different than degrees. So make sure you put that there if you are, in fact, working in degrees. So we're going to write down what we know. Next we're going to pick a scale. So this is picking the scale to put along our x and our y axes. And I always recommend that we look at the horizontal shift factor. We're going to do this in a couple steps. We're first going to graph the blue, which is the parent function. And then we're going to graph the red, which is applying all the transformations except for the horizontal shift. And then finally we'll graph the green, which is the final function, which includes the horizontal shift. So picking a scale that you can easily shift left and right based on that horizontal shift is really useful here. So the next thing we know what we're going to do once we've picked our scale is we're going to graph the parent function here. So in this case, the parent function is sine x. And a little kind of a diagram that sometimes I, I like to draw just to remind myself is I draw um, a cross here. And I remember that sine of 0 is 0 to 0, sine of 90 is 1, sine of 180 is 0, sine of 270 is negative 1, sine of 360 is 0. So we see that periodic kind of behavior, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. So I can easily come down here and I can plot 0, 1, 90, 0, negative 1, 0, and if this continued, 1, 0, negative 1. So now, once we've graphed the parent function, then what we're going to do is we're going to graph a new function without the horizontal shift. So the first step in this process is I actually put in the sinusoidal axes, which we can see right here. So I dot in the sinusoidal axes, and then I do the same idea, except for I imagine 0 being at, at the sinusoidal axis. So this is the 0. And then we know at 90 degrees we get the 1, but we have an amplitude of 4, so I count up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's that point. Then I come back to 0, which, again, we imagine 0 being on the sinusoidal axis. And then I move to negative 1. So again, we're thinking in terms of this sinusoidal axis now. So if we have an amplitude of 4, we see that we go down 1, 2, 3, 4. And then back to 0. So the last thing we do is we apply our horizontal shift. So I take each of these points, so here, and I just walk 40 degrees to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, there's 40 degrees. 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 And 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are the only points I actually plot and then I get this nice smooth curve drawn in there. So again, recap. We start off by picking a scale, making note of our horizontal shift, if there is one. I graph the parent function, which in this case is sine x. And then I graph, I graph our new function without the horizontal shift. So to do that, I dot in the sinusoidal axes and imagine that same pattern but applying the amplitude as indicated in the function. And then finally, I apply that horizontal shift. 
So in the next video, we'll take a look at a slightly different function, and I'll go through these steps again. I hope this helped.